Prime Minister addressing the Oban project. Operation Northern Strike hitting Grand Bahama during the early hours of the morning. And FNM supporters remembering the party's founding father. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition starts now. This is The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Megan Shepard. Thank you so much for tuning in. The nation's leader admitting missteps with the controversial Oban Energy Project proposed for East Grand Bahama. Topping the news, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis during his mid-year budget contribution in Parliament this afternoon addressed the myriad of concerns and confusion surrounding the Oban Energy's project. The nation's leader telling Parliament that the missteps should not have happened, but occurred in the government's haste to boost the Grand Bahama economy. He says while their hearts were in the right place and they were acting with good intentions, they should have done a more comprehensive due diligence. Dr. Minnis also advising that Oban's non-executive chairman, Peter Krager, the man at the center of the controversy, is no longer with the company. Dr. Minnis says the $5.5 billion oil refinery and storage terminal, terminal must go forward in the best interest of the environment. The Prime Minister noting that additional procedures will be put in place at the Bahamas Investment Authority to mitigate further such incidents. More details on the Prime Minister's address will come in the National Report. Many residents throughout Grand Bahama were awoken this morning by the roar of helicopters. The massive joint operation between local and U.S. law enforcement agencies resulted in over 50 persons being taken into custody. Today's operation comes days after a major drug bust in Bahamia. Our Sabrina Brown was on the scene this morning as the investigation unfolded. A team of DU officers descending on communities around Grand Bahama early Tuesday morning, among them the Garden Villas area. Operation Northern Strike, a major takedown on Grand Bahama, began at 1 a.m. Tuesday morning. A joint effort between the Royal Bahamas Police Force Drug Enforcement Unit, the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, and the United States Drug Enforcement Administration, Homeland Security Investigation, the Coast Guard, and ATF. Officer in charge of Grand Bahama and the Northern Bahamas, Assistant Commissioner Samuel Butler. Part of my role here is to be able to assess criminal issues in our environment and once we make those assessments to initiate a plan of action. ZNS News catching up with officers in Garden Villas, the area known as the ghetto where a DEA helicopter landed. Onlookers gathered in large groups to see what was going on. The police K-9 unit was used to locate suspected dangerous drugs hidden throughout that community and a number of people were taken into custody. Officer in charge of crime investigation, Assistant Commissioner of Police Clayton Fernander, heading a special task force out of New Providence. Doing our search in an area called uh, the ghetto, we were able to recover a number of drugs in different pockets of that area. And I must commend the K-9 uh, unit, uh, the K-9s. Uh, they were the star this morning because they were able to sniff out a number of drugs that were hidden in some areas that your eyes would not see. And they were able to sniff out a number of drugs, a quantity of uh, suspected uh, marijuana. But Garden Villas was just one of the major areas of interest. The massive operation leading authorities to uncover large sums of cash, drugs, guns and ammunition at various locations throughout the island. I can't give a, a count at this time, but it was a, a large quantity of drugs. Also, we were able to see is a large quantity of monies that uh, individuals can't give an account for. It was found in their homes and can't give an account for it. We, I can't give a figure at this time, but there was a large amount of cash, U.S. and Bahamian, found hidden in some of those, those homes. 
More than 50 people were arrested and taken into custody. They are all believed to be Bahamians and residents of Grand Bahama. ACP Fernandez says special intelligence resulted in a successful operation and this effort will continue. Uh, you will just see the results. You will not know the time we will strike, but uh, you will see the results. And I uh, must apologize to uh, the residents in those areas. Uh, I know we woke them up early this morning, but that element of surprise, and it was in good faith that the choppers were over some of the homes, but it was in good faith, and uh, we want to commend the members of the public uh, who continue to assist us in our fight. Lieutenant Commander of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, Eric Strawn. With this operation this morning, we were very pleased of the success, and we hail, most importantly, the partnership that, that all of these different bodies represent here this morning. Sabrina Brown, ZNS Network News. A 38-year-old Haitian man taken to court today to answer charges of illegal landing. Jackson Burles pled guilty to the charge of illegal landing and was ordered to pay a fine of $300 or in default serve three months at the Bahamas Department of Corrections in New Providence. He was also ordered to be deported upon payment of the fine or completion of his court-imposed custodial sentence. Burles claimed that he entered the Bahamas illegally by boat from Haiti some 16 days ago and remained in the country without legal status. Burles was unable to pay the fine and remained in police custody. The Barry and Sheena Johnson murder trial is expected to resume in the Supreme Court next week. After calling some 24 witnesses, the Crown closed its case yesterday and the jury was asked to return to court on April 3rd. Paul Belazer, Devon Hall and Kevin Dames are all accused of two counts of murder, one count of armed robbery and robbing the victims of their car keys and their GMC truck valued at over $8,000. The Johnsons were shot and killed at their home in Holmes Rock back in September 2015. The murder trial has been ongoing now since September of last year. In other news, the governing Free National Movement spending time in church this past Sunday to commemorate the birthday of founding father Sir Cecil Wallace Whitfield. During that service, party members and supporters heard of the Freedom Fighter's many accomplishments and was challenged to live with courage and conviction, just as he did. Deputy Prime Minister the Honorable K. Peter Turnquest, along with other parliamentarians, party leaders and his supporters, marking the birthdays of Sir Cecil Wallace Whitfield by attending his former home church. Turnquest says that he is grateful to Sir Cecil for his tremendous sacrifices and his fight for democracy in this nation, which has paved the way for him in his political career. He was a courageous leader, a courageous warrior in, free, in the fight for freedom and democracy in this country and for the two-party system that we have. Uh, he was a founder uh, uh, in respect to education, educational advancement and the building of the infrastructure, the educational infrastructure we have in the country, as well as the uh, uh, fight for uh, land rights uh, and for other social justice issues in this country. He was one of those persons who pioneered uh, the fight for the people uh, and, and when he had that courage that when he saw things going wrong he forgot uh, and was very self selfless about uh, taking the leap and to and to go on to on, on his own and found this party uh, along with the other freedom fighters. The FNM has visited the church 27 times since the passing of Sir Cecil. Rector Christ the King, Archdeacon Harry Bain, adding that Sir Cecil was a man of great character, conviction, and he was not afraid to stand up and build a better Bahamas for all. He was a man of courage. He was a man of conviction. He was a man of character. He never became content and comfortable. When you get comfortable, watch out. Something is up. He was a freedom fighter, determined to bring real change to the development of our beautiful Bahamas. He admonished all in frontline politics to not get content in their efforts to do good for all. Do not make the popular decisions. Make the tough and right decisions that will benefit our national growth. Sir Cecil was a lawyer one 
whom I'm told defended clients and strangers alike for free at times. He was about justice for all. A leading lady of the Free National Movement has passed away. Former educator and cabinet minister Teresa Moxie Ingram passed away today at the age of 67. Moxie Ingram served in the cabinet of former prime minister, the Right Honorable Hubert Ingram, and held various positions, including minister for transport, culture, health, and environment, social development, agriculture, commerce, housing, labor, immigration, and social services. As an educator, Moxie Ingram taught English, literature, and drama in the public school system and at the private tertiary level. She also served as the executive director of the Bahamas campus of Sojourner Douglas College and was a past president of the Association of Tertiary Institutions in the Bahamas. She recently served as the chairman of the National Training Agency. Stay with us, The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition continues in just a moment.